Hi, and welcome to Living on Purpose with me, Jenny Dean. I first wanted to say thank you guys for all tuning in last week. That means the world to me that you take time out of your busy schedules to listen to me. Um, I really, 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 really appreciate it. This week, we're going to talk about core values. Um, If you asked me about 2010, yeah, maybe a couple, I would say four or five years ago, what a core value was or what my specific core values were, I would have no idea what you're talking about. I didn't really spend time with it. I didn't think about it. I was too busy, you know, having babies and um, just getting through day to day. But now I have actually spent a lot of time researching self-discovery. I went to a Tony Robbins event last summer in um, Chicago, and it just kind of helped me notice how important it is that we live in alignment with our purpose and what we're supposed to be doing. Hello, Jenny. Hi. <laughs> um, I couldn't, I have to stop you there. You, yes. were, you went to meet the man. You went on an event that the man was talking. Please yes. tell us more. Yeah, so it was a Tony's Robbins event. Um, he spoke for four days. It was a crazy event. Um, his whole thing was to keep you up super late at night. I remember that. One night you had to walk across the fire like at 1 a.m. What? Yeah. Walk across the fire? And his whole reason for doing it that late at night is because he wants you exhausted and to where you don't want to do it. Um, and there was an ambulance uh, Like there. anyone would do it normally. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty interesting. And then you're up early. Um, it was really uh, mind-blowing for me. It was an awakening for sure. Just to, he taught me that we have to be in control of our lives or your life will control you. And that just kind of sat with me. And his biggest thing that he taught me was um, like the state that you're in. So if you're having a bad day, he likes to physically move your body. So we danced a lot. He played super loud music. He made you get out of your chair. He kept it 60 degrees in there. I mean, freezing. People had scarves, hats on crazy crazy cold but he believes in it's just the state of your body and once you get out physically of what you're in like if you're in a bad place sitting down he wants you to physically move dance jump anything you can do which i truly believe in because it changes your state of mind completely huh interesting yeah okay (laughs) yeah you should try that uh yeah let's next episode you and i go and walk in the fire dance in 60 degree weather (laughs) Um, anyway, it was a great event. I, I suggest people go to that um, if they want more self-development. I don't think it was all for me, but um, I did get a lot of good points out of it. So I'm here today because I don't know if anyone's been through that and actually sat down and listed out their core values. Um, and I, because I didn't prior to that, I went to a yoga retreat in Aruba this last summer too, and we had to journal and write. And it's really just identifying what is the most important thing to you, and you have to live your life and align with it, or you're going to notice everything's out of whack. And that's where I was a couple of years ago. Um, you're just kind of living the rat race, Groundhog Day, and there's really no purpose and. I would just get out of bed, set my alarm, and do it all over again the next day and the next day. And now I really don't. I'm like excited to get up. And um, I have a ritual like I shared with y'all prior, my morning routine. I actually look forward to that. So my number one core value that um, is, of course, God, the relationship I have with um God, right first thing in the morning, he's my number one priority. If I don't have that little bit of time to like just breathe and just continue to talk to him, then my whole day is out of alignment. Are you talking about kind of like uh, setting some time to talk, to pray? I do both. I pray and I would say it's meditation, maybe. I mean, I'm not quiet. I mean, my brain isn't really quiet during it, but I'm reading um, those daily meditations that I shared last week. And it just gets me away from thinking all about myself and that there's a higher purpose. So um, that's my number one core value because that that's as soon as I wake up. And my day is truly off if I don't do that, really. 
And then my second one, I identified as family, of course. I live, eat, and breathe for my children. And um, I, you know, get them dressed. I do everything for them in the mornings and whatever I can do after school. Um, I want to be as present as I can when I'm with them to, you know, let them know that they're my number one. I care about them the most, and I'm there for them no matter what, whatever they need. And, of course, my last one, I'm going to share my top three with you. I have more, but my top three and my last one's my passion. I um, was a school teacher before, special education teacher, and I taught all of it. I taught elementary, I taught middle school, and I taught high school. And I will say it was not my passion. Um, I just, it was work for me. It was hard, but I love the kids, so I stayed in it. I'm a huge, super uh, kid person. But um, it wasn't like I could live, eat, and breathe it. It was seven to four, and I was done. Now I can say I truly dug deep and found what I'm supposed to be doing in my life. And it's a value of mine that I don't ever want to put on the back burner. And I want to just keep excelling and keep leading and keep growing um, into, I believe God gives you one purpose in life and he gives every single pers person it and we should be trying to fulfill it, trying to find what we're supposed to be doing or some type of gratification for him. So, and so I didn't even know any of that until um, I really dug deep. I read a lot of books. I will say that. I love when people ask me if they're going through something and what kind of books they can get. I have like a whole library at home. And I hope to just grow on that. So please share if you guys know of any good books. Because um, I do believe there's a book for every problem. <laughs> or it's something everything. I like that. <laughs> right? Something that we're all going through. I will say Seed of the Soul. There's also a huge podcast. This is Oprah Winfrey's um, favorite book. I have read this probably three times. That's the thing about books. I just go kind of back and forth. I highlight all the stuff, um, that the, all the important stuff that I get out of it. And then I honestly, I reread them. I don't know if that's weird or what I love that because yeah. you really need to sometimes something is so deep that you need to go back to it and you need right. to rem remind yourself of that and it will hit me another time you know and it won't hit me um, that another good book I just thought of is the four agreements we do that in teacher training yeah I teach yoga teachers how to teach yoga but it's not it's not really just teaching physical yoga it is more of a self-development it's I call it 200 hours of self-counseling <laughs> I so um, it is a lot of self-development that I don't think people take enough time out of their day to really get to know themselves. Because if you know yourself and you're super aligned with your values, then all people do is feed off of that. Like I've always read that the person in the room, you can notice the person in the room that is lives with their, within their core values and has strong boundaries. So I do want to do a podcast on boundaries because I'm not so good at that. <laughs> boundaries as in kind as of uh, in, setting setting what's good for you and what's not. Or yeah, just not letting stop. in what you're what you're not supposed to take on, taking on other people's problems. I see. I go, I teach probably if I teach two classes, I'm seeing about 80 people a day, and that is 80 people's energy I take on, which um, I'm. It's a process of me learning not to take it on. But that's creating boundaries for me personally. I have to know, you know, when to leave it in the studio and all of that. Um, so they say the, the strongest person in the room is when they're not talking with their hands because they're super into, um, they believe with conviction, like what they're saying. And um, people are just drawn to them. And I believe that. And I want to be that person. Um, I don't think I'm there yet at all. I probably have years of studying about myself. But that is a goal of mine. Um, and so I want to provide you guys with, like, how the heck do you find your values or whatever? Um, what does that look like? So I provided a core values list. And what Tony Robbins had us do was go through this list, circle what was, like, really stood out for us, like, what really, really resonated for us. I circled what made me smile. And there was, like, I would say probably out of that list, 12 of them. 12 or 15 that's really, really resonated with me. Um, and that could be 20, that could be three for you. All you're supposed to do is write it down 
and then you prioritize. Um, they should they say to have three to five of your top ones, and they change with seasons. So if you're going through th through something, your core value might be totally different. Um, that is totally normal for it to change. Your job is to just be aware of the change and be aware of um, what value is most important to you. So like I said, mine is God, and then it is family, and then it is my passion. So um, I gave you guys a list, and then there's some questions that I want you to, the way you identify these, and it doesn't take, like it took me, I would say a good week to figure this out. It wasn't like, oh, okay, this works with me, because it's something that you have to do daily to be really in purpose and really aligned with them. Like I wake up and I read God's word and I take care of my kids, which is my family. And then I teach every day. Every day I'm living out my passion in teaching. So these are things I practice every single day to only help me grow as an individual and live within God's purpose. Um, so some helpful questions that he said for us to ask you, ask ourselves is what really matters to you? Like, I remember thinking, oh, when I grow up, I want to live in a nice house and, you know, have a cute little family and drive a nice car. But now I look back on it and none of that, um, resonates with me. I don't care if I live in a 5,000 square foot house or a 1300 square foot house, you know, it's not about the size of the house to me. Um, why do I want it? Like, why do you want to live in the house? Why do you want to drive the Lamborghini? Why do you want to work at a school? So you have to know your why. What makes you come alive? So I can say I live with that. Um, I am lucky enough when I teach, I am for 60 minutes totally engaged with um, everybody in my class. I It's like an outer body experience. I can't explain it. I don't think about myself, which is amazing, for 60 minutes. So it's an act of service for me. And I truly embody what everyone else is feeling. And I hope people get that from my class. Um, it is not just an hour of, okay, let's just do this. It is like an hour of, let me help you. And they help me more than they even know. Um, so that's cool. When you're actually living in line with that, it's really not work. And I truly believe that. Um, and you're supposed to ask yourself, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? Like, what do you want people to say at your funeral? Oh, I love that. I know. And that's a tough one. Um, because, you know, actions are important, but, you know, your actions are truly what matters the most. At the end of the day, right. is how you wanted to live your life, but as well as do you want to be remembered by that? So that's Yeah, that's really and I good. think about that. Like I always, like with these podcasts, I always tell my kids, I'm going to film a podcast today and you're going to watch it one day. Right now you don't give a damn. You just want to go play <laughs> on the whatever. But one day, like I think about them um, and I want them to say, this is what my mommy did. And, you know, she was truly living out her purpose in life. And that should only push them and help them because that's my only wish for them. Otherwise, I just feel like you are, um, and I've done it. I did it for, I think, 35 years. I was just living day by day, and I'm t that is not how we're supposed to live. Um, and again, to these questions that I just asked you guys, um, I will also post them, but there's no right or wrong. Like, there's no, everybody's different. So, um what I think most people don't do is spend actual time on um, on these questions and identifying what is most important because it will prioritize your whole entire day. I know I took my sister this past summer to Aruba on this, this girl I follow who's an amazing yoga teacher. And she gave us a journal about identifying our values. And like my, I know my sister has never been through yoga training, never done the self-development stuff. She works her butt off. And it was like an eye-opening for her because she was in that rat race. And now I feel like she has, she's living within her purpose, living within her values, but it does, it takes time. It doesn't just come to you. I know that for a fact, like you have to dive in and get deeper into these questions. 
Um, other than that, um, there's a really good quote Warren Buffett says. He says, the difference between very, very successful people and highly successive, successful people is highly successful people say no 100% of the time. They have strong core values and powerful boundaries. They do not waver on their decision making. It either aligns with their values or it doesn't. So that is where I'm hoping to get um, the no part I have really bad trouble with. I am a yes person, and um, I know with time I will get to be a no person if it doesn't align with my value. And I'll, and I'll have that icky feeling, and I've had that a lot. So I have to, and I acknowledge it, and I'm aware of it. And I just have to grow from there. Right, because there's, there's a slight difference between saying no, that saying yes if, right? It's just yes. one is about the purpose. Is there a purpose in this? And are you aligning your purpose to these new challenge versus just saying yes for the sake of it and wait and kind of like diverting yourself from your path? Right. And I will say I'm, I'm there right now. I say a lot of yeses to a lot of things that should not are just kind of a waste of time. And I'm finally getting on a path where I am, I feel capable of saying no and um, people will still respect me, I guess. Um, That's a whole podcast, I feel like. <laughs> right. right. Kind exactly. of like moving and still getting, getting that um, place where you are, where you still feel like you are doing your purpose, yet you're keeping those boundaries where they should be so you can yeah keep and there's a book for that it's called boundaries and <laughs> um it's a good one i think i have that highlighted everywhere and i will do a podcast on that um because that is one that i feel like everyone needs you know um and that is all i have i have brought some books. I told you guys about Seed of the Soul. I love anything John Maxwell. I listen to his podcast all the time. Um, and then I do have a book called The One Thing, which has really helped me out because I feel like I could get into a lot of different things um, just because uh, I enjoy a lot of different things. But it is helpful to focus on one thing and like really, really get, get, get good at that. Like that whole thing with um, 10,000 hours of practice of something. I always, I, so I teach handstand workshops and I'm like 10,000 hours, practice, 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 practice. And it's the damn truth. Like the more you do it, the more you're going to get good at it. And I don't know how many times I say that in class, but um, that is the truth with everything else, you know? So, and next week, you guys, I'm going to be coming in here and I've had a lot of questions on nutrition. And um, I would love to help you guys out on that. I will talk about my staples in my diet and um, I guess my discipline. I kind of think everyone eats like I do, but I know they don't. And um, I want to give you guys some tips for holidays because there's a lot of dinners we have to go to and parties we have to go to and everyone wants to stay on track. So I will give you guys some tips for that. So I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a good day.